prepare your damn self for something you've probably not seen done on YouTube before, despite me never researching that claim. Today we're going to do something that marries two technologies that seldom intertwine. We are going to fucking run C++ on the back end. Why would I do that, you ask? Well, if you guys have uh, watched my channel for a while, you might have noticed that I've made some claims in the past that JavaScript isn't as fast as C++. That shouldn't be news to many people, but that doesn't mean that JavaScript has no use whatsoever. It is a viable technology in the web. However, there are times when it's too damn slow to do certain things, and this is where I'm going to chime in. I also want to thank everybody for hitting 7,000 subscribers. I never would have thought this channel had that many, considering how inconsistent I am at uploading things. So this video is kind of a thank you to that as well. So let's get started. I have a Node server here uh, running on Node.js, one of the more popular current technologies for running small miniature backend systems, um, you know, to, to do RESTful services and stuff like that. Um, basically, the whole point of node servers is that they run, they wait for requests, they serve requests, and then they give back the result of what's called web APIs to various systems that might need it. Uh, those client systems could be other code running in a web browser, like an HTML page. Um, it could That's called the front end. It could be client apps running on like an iPad or an iPhone app or an Android app, um, or it could be apps running uh, C++ code elsewhere. Um, all the code that's ran on the server is typically called the back end, and that code is typically written in languages that are higher level than C++. Uh, nowadays, mostly JavaScript, uh, C Sharp, um, ASP, which used to be written in Java. Um, I could go on and on, PHP. But mostly, the takeaway is that these languages are high level, and they're not native, and they do have performance problems uh, to do certain computational tasks. So uh, what I've done here is I've created a node server, and I've added uh, two routes to it, which of course I don't frickin' have open. Damn it. Um, routes. There they are. One's called come on, and the other one's called Rand. And neither of them really do what the hell uh, they say they do. Uh, just, you know, whatever. Um, and then they run through a controller, and the controller is actually what serves those requests. We're going to go ahead and close this one for now. So the, uh, the object of the RAND uh, API is to simulate uh, a lottery and see whether or not you won. Uh, now, in order for me to do that, what I'd like to do is uh, simulate an entire lifetime of playing the lottery. So I wanted to look up what the odds were of winning the lottery, which happened to be 1 in 175 million, and I thought, if I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of lottery simulations over and over again, it would make more sense to do it in a native language like C++. Or at least we'll say that for the sake of argument for this video. So how the hell do you run C++ in Node? Well, let's write it first, and then I will explain. In other words, how do you call C++ from Node? How do you make this module be written in something that's not JavaScript? Well, let's go ahead and go on over to our file. And what we have here, damn it, is... Um, a file written in C++ that makes use of a number of APIs. The most important ones are Node and Node Buffer. And um, well, for now, we'll just talk about Node. Uh, so basically, what I did to get started with this is I started with the tutorial and then modified it and did a couple things to expose my two functions. So we have uh, a namespace here called Come On, and then we have a function in here called Do Rand, which is going to simulate our lottery. So I figured. Suppose you live to be about 100 years old and you played the lottery every day. That's 365 days times 100. But let's suppose you were a psycho and you bought 1,000 lottery tickets per day. This is not an accurate simulation of the lottery. I didn't do some pick six numbers. All I did was take a number between 1, 175 million, see if it is equal to your number, and if it ever was during your entire lifetime, you win. And uh, I break, otherwise you lose, and I don't. And then I return the result of that in um, what's called a local uh, value that JavaScript or Node can understand and pass back to the user. This is stuff that's not all that important, but it's kind of the syntactic glue between the native C++ environment and the Node runtime that's calling this function. 
Uh, to further elaborate on how that works, um, the node system works by calling your plugin with this macro. So you basically say node module, whatever your module name is going to be, initialize, which is the function that's called when your module or add-on is loaded, and then you set the methods that you're going to expose uh, from your, ad your native add-on. In this case, we expose two functions. One's called commone, the other one's called rand. And uh, when JavaScript calls rand, you land in this callback, which is the do rand function that I was just walking you guys through. You understand? I like to say you understand, like Ray Liotta at the end of um, Goodfellas. He's like, he's a good fella. You understand? Like, he acts like we don't understand, but I do. I just went off on a tangent. Sorry about that. No more talking about Goodfellas. So, how do we uh, compile this? Because this is, without a doubt, the freaking hardest aspect of this was getting all this shit set up. Like, it took me an hour at least to prepare for this video. I only thought it was going to take me like five minutes. But, you know, that's how it is sometimes. So I wrote some notes about how I... Oh, God! I'm going to have to edit that out. That's fucking great. I wrote some notes about how... Um, how I got here with this. Uh, the most important thing, no matter what server you're running on, you want to be running on the latest node. So uh, at least version 6 or higher. Without that, you're really screwed. I tried setting this up on my Linux server, and uh, without that, I had a big problem. Uh, so make sure you're on the latest node. Um, if you're on Linux, you know apt-get install node.js or whatever it's called. Um, I'm on my Mac, so I know I am. Next, you want to install something called uh, node jip. And this is what helps you build native plugins or native add-ons. Just run this command npm install dash g for global and node jip. I've already done that. And if you do that, node jip, jip should become a command that you can run. Um, after that, you create, uh, you take your C++ code, you put it in a folder. I like to put it in CPP. And you, you essentially, this is the file I was just showing you. You create a binding.jip file. And you really only need to put, well, <laughs> you normally would only need to put a couple things in there. Um, these things have to do with the dependency that I'm about to show you in a second. But essentially, you need to define your target name and then the sources, which is just the one file uh, in a JSON like this. So uh, lots of tutorials exist on how to set this up. I know I had to read through a lot of them, but uh, for a simple plug-in really all, or, or add-on, all you really need is these two. Once you've done that, you should be able to run in your same folder, node jip uh, configure. Come on, damn it. And then node jip build. And assuming everything went well and you didn't get any errors, you should notice that you have a uh, build folder, release, and then your .node file, which is your compiled add-on. This again is completely native, completely C++ code. It's not JavaScript at all, so it's gonna run with native speeds. After you've done that, this is what took me way too long to realize. Um, you need to essentially uh, include or import the, uh, the native add-on into your JavaScript code, and the way I do that is I require, but what screwed me over was I forgot it's a relative path, so you have to go. So we know that this particular file is in here, main controller, so we go period, period, to go up once, then again, then CPP, then build, then release, and finally, come on, the name of the uh, module. That's what took me a while. Once the damn thing is loaded, uh, you can essentially call the functions in it like you would any other function in JavaScript. So if I want to get the result, uh, which is a Boolean, if you remember from our C++ code, I do a boolean object return from do rand, which is our lotto simulation. If you want to get the result, uh, you just call your function, and then you re return from your RESTful uh, JavaScript API as you normally would. So let's run it and see what this looks like. It's running. All right, run it. Fucking lost. Um, so as you can see, this goes pretty fast. Like it's running, you know, an entire lottery's worth of simulations, and it doesn't take all that long to return. I did not do a comparison in JavaScript to see if it was going to be any different. That's not the point of this video. Just to show you guys how to al uh, algorithmically simulate uh, something like this in C++ and call it from JavaScript on the back end. 
So um, obviously, there's probably more efficient ways to do this, but again, I just wanted to show you how it looks. At one point, I don't know if it happened during this recording, this actually returned true, which was funny. Like you actually won at one point. But a um, big takeaway from this is don't play the lottery. Uh, okay, so uh, that's not the end of the video. I wanted to show you something a little cooler than that. Um, so there's another one in here called Kamon, which uh, I wanted to kind of... Originally, I was thinking of pulling SDL in to do this, because what better of a strong suit of C++ than actually manipulating individual pixels and generating bitmaps out of thin air? Um, but I figured in this particular case, um, a framework that I'm used to been using for most of my career, at least in the command line, is called Image Magic. I figured that we were better suited to do something like that. So what am I doing here? I'm actually telling Image Magic to generate an image from scratch in RAM and then export that image blob data as a JPEG to a buffer in memory and then actually hand that buffer back to the calling JavaScript code in a node buffer. This is really cool because doing something like this from scratch in JavaScript without using like frameworks like Canvas APIs would be a giant slow pain in the ass where being able to leverage uh, all this native code like image magic actually doing all the crazy things it can do or even writing your own image processing code in native C++ and then calling it and embedding it inside a node add-on. It's just really awesome. So all this really does is just creates a gradient and then draws a uh, circle over it to kind of look like a sunset. Uh, when we're done we create a node buffer and we uh, pass it back to the calling function and then um, that's really all this function does. After that, in JavaScript, um, in the controller, we take the resultant data, tell the browser that it is a my mimi type uh, of image JPEG, and then send it uh, to the to the browser the actual binary blob. And this actually works pretty well. I was expecting this to be more of a pain in the ass, but as you can see, if I run this here. Again, this image was never stored. It's also really fast. I mean, it almost returns right away, which is really cool. So as you can see, this image is actually not saved anywhere. It's being generated on the fly every single time you hit this Wave API, and it's being done by C++. So it's really cool to be able to do something like this. Uh, in order for me to get image magic to actually work, it's kind of the same old story with C++. You have to make sure that it can find the headers and that it can find the libraries that it needs to work. In this particular case, uh, you just need to set the C flags and libraries equal to uh, the image magic, um, I guess you can say, library utility that you have installed on your machine. Uh, you have to have image magic installed to be able to do this. And of course, because Mac is a piece of shit, uh, it has to have its own special C flags to build, uh, uh, to build this thing on Mac versus if we were just on Linux. Um, but adding these C flags in is really all it took uh, to get this thing to build and, and live inside Node. Uh, so that's really cool, and that's kind of really all I had. I just wanted to demonstrate you guys, you know, how to do C++ on the back end, because there might be some really computational algorithms out there that, that need to be written or have already been written that people want to access from new technologies like Node, and this is how you do it. So, all right, guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and there's always nothing. One thing I forgot to mention uh, during this video that um, is definitely something I'm aware of is there is the WebAssembly route as well, which is a way for you to compile C++ and other native code directly to a, a web-friendly byte, like byte code format. I'm probably going to look into that in a later video, but for now I wanted to focus on true native. So.